true. <laughs> yeah. I, to be very frank, that's not the only time I've ever used it in my lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here comes the peaks and bends. All right. Uh, and Abram is taken off the uh, taken off the board as long as Aphelios, as well as Aphelios. I mean, I think that's pretty smart. You know, I mean, Brahm has been doing a lot of uh, zoning in previous matches. I mean, not with these guys, but like I can definitely see the potential of really messing up the game. Ooh, I see a very interesting way of banning right now. So on the left side, they're taking away all strong support picks, and on the right, taking all of the strong AD picks. Um, is this just research inbound, or is there is this something that they are planning out right now? Ooh, Zoe's gone Ooh. as well. It's a bit odd for hey, Zoe Ben. Never pick a fight you can't win. But you know, these gone. are quite standard. These are quite. This is these are like quite standard bands you see in solo queue. So I I don't really mind. Maybe because they're trying to go for like a, a comp and they, they know that these three like champions are gonna ruin it. You know. And hmm. of course, everyone comes in with a plan, and for the left side. Their plan, sorry, so for Soul Blaze X, their plan is right now is to lock, just take away the Orn and deny any other ways for the right side to cancel them out. As uh, sorry, as um, the right team uh currently locks in on the Aatrox and the Nautilus. I think yeah, we're <coughs> gonna go for like a catch com, especially seeing that Nautilus locked in. Maybe he's gonna. You know, start doing like all those room early and get that kills for the jungle and the mid lane. You know. Another Olaf appears in the series as Ray locks in on the Olaf. Now let's. Mm, it, it feels like they are locking in accordingly to the top. Okay, no mind. I take that back. I thought they were gonna be locking in from top to bottom. Uh, but <laughs> it disproved me. They 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 proved me wrong. I mean, if, if anything, you know, the, the, the past couple of games, even yesterday's games, ha has proven that Olaf is a strong character, and mostly a lot of people picks him. And Trundle as well. Trundle again. Certainly popular in the Black Box tournament right now. Yeah, but I know. Like, what is everybody reading? <laughs> to follow up, uh, Katarina and LeBlanc is taken away. Katarina Ben. Hmm, this is certainly not a, a usual pick that we have seen, or, or, or at least it's not a pick that we've seen at all in the current situation. And um, on the uh, sorry, uh, team calm down buddy just takes it away. Not a problem. As well as the Senna and follow up, uh, so Blaze takes away the misfortune. Now we're waiting for uh, Azrael Robbie to uh, make a pick. He hasn't chosen anything. That's so weird. Like. Not even any consideration at all. He's <laughs> even seconds on the clock here. Oh, I believe we won't we won't see it even if he hovers it. I think. Yeah. Or there is a oh. disconnection. Okay, never mind. There we oh, go. Oh, and Udir. Yo. Things are getting spicy. Now I do not understand the matchup between an Udir and an Olaf, but I do understand that both of these characters are really strong in terms of jungle clearance. So this could be a game where we have to pay more attention to the jungle. Oh yeah, of course. You also consider is it a is it a Udir jungle or is it a Chandra jungle? And we can see Udir top lane against Oh them. Right? I don't know. I have a feeling it's most likely gonna be Udir, you know, because he has that ability. I think it's called like the Tiger Fist. I think that's definitely good for clearing oh, the yeah. jungles. Mm -hmm. Was it Tiger Fist? He's like, you know, one, two, three. <laughs> the ti tiger stance, I think. Tiger stance. Ah, right. He has stances, right? If I mean, yeah. like different stances. Yeah, yeah and, and I, he's got the heat, might, the turtle stance, one. which is the oh. shield. Oh, oh my and god. This connection uh, uh, happens, I assume. They, okay, so basically, we got. Uh, they say they picked the wrong hero in the drafting phase, and they want to dodge. Um. Okay. Um, can you ask them? <laughs> Kiri's like disqualified. How goes? Can you explain what happened? Uh, and uh, Ron, while, while you're at it, uh, reach out to John and see how he replies. Mm -hmm. I'm reaching out to John right now. He's gonna... Oh, oh, so, so basically the, uh, there is an apparent bug. Yeah, he said there was... And it, all right, see, that's the thing. 
the udir. That see the thing is that was why it was weird because it was just like would any sane person ever choose udir? Maybe it's possible. You know, we were trying to justify it. We were admitted. All of us were trying to justify the udir. So now we know it's probably a bug. Yeah, it was. It's pretty pretty weird to see. Anyway, but I mean, I um, thought it was weird as well because there was no no hero chosen. There was no like thinking process like. I mean, choose, uh, you know, this or that. I mean, I'll give him a pass. I, 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 I doubt anybody would choose Udir with that specific matchup. I mean, sorry, Team Comp. We <laughs> we talked about the idea. It, it could really work. Like, um, it could work. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, like, because I played Udir before, and and you know, he's he's quite. Lackluster? I mean, he's a good jungler, yeah, but like, that's it. That's it. <laughs> you know, he's just like, he can just clear, you know? Right, um, so in that, in their situation, I believe that they are pretty con um, concise on... I believe, at least, I believe they're gonna bring the, the Trundle into the jungle role. Um, but I actually do like coming in, uh, having the Trundle in the top lane. So Trundle, uh, uh, we haven't brought this topic up, but... Trundle is a very strong tank peeler. So yeah, I have to correct myself. Um, yesterday I talked to everyone and told everyone that um, Trundle is really strong with Conqueror, uh, especially uh, since his ultimate gets a life steal. Uh, I was completely wrong about that. I read up on the um, the numbers, the words, and everything. So when he presses his ultimate, he doesn't gain life steal, but instead he sucks health directly from the uh, from the target he goes on to so it's the amount of maximum health right. that the character has he takes it over so he is a hardcore tank um tank there we go Ari, Ari um, gets see, locked see, in now that that makes a lot of sense now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong I mean my knowledge may not be as deep but it just happens like Ari she happens to be a pretty good jungler if I'm not mistaken right or a bottom <laughs> she's a mid lane <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Trundle, Trundle will be the jungle in this uh, case of uh, in this case as uh, Aatrox will head up top. Oh dang! Okay. Mm -hmm. Ari is the mid. Right. Uh. So yeah. Okay. Um. To finish things off regarding Trundle. So yeah, I got it wrong. It's not life steal. It sucks max health out of the opponent as well as the movement speed, um, armor and magic magic resist from the target that he sucked out of. So yeah. Ooh. Oh. Dear, I'm Hopefully, I don't think so. can get rid of straw because you know On and Olaf look really good for Trundle to you know get some stats off. And uh, looking at these two comps, right? Uh, oh, tell me what you think. You think okay. which team based like, on composition? Okay, well, in terms of the left side, I can I can definitely see that. Hmm, okay, uh, you know what, okay, let's just say uh, the right side, I definitely have more confidence in because the Aatrox is a very strong pick. Trundle, just based on Defoe's, uh description, seems to be like the right choice. Azrael, um, have we seen him in a previous game? I don't, I don't yeah, we did. We yeah, did. We, yeah, we did, sorry, yeah. So Azrael has proven to be quite a good choice. Uh, Ari, although I got it wrong, I know generally Ari is a pretty good character to have. So I think on the right side, it's a pretty good composition. On the left side, I'm kind of like 50-50. I'm good with the Olaf, but the Hermitdinger and Tristana, I'm not too sure. Alistar, yeah, okay, maybe, but yeah. Mm, okay, how about how about default? So this is a game of suddenly how each character or each player wants to outplay the opponent. So in a case where um, so Mo, you are correct to be suspicious or cautious about the Tristana pick because if a good Tristana knows how to play, um, her 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 damage output is really strong. She can jump in and walk out of a fight. Uh, if um. If the conditions are met, especially in the case where Ezreal is not too strong in the early game, especially when Ezreal's first item is to go for tier of the goddess, he's gonna be yeah. on the back paddle of the side of the game for quite a bit. But in this game, where a Nautilus is on Ezreal's side, if Tristana does jump in on the Ezreal, Ezreal has options to just back out. He has the flash, he has the arcane shift, he can easily back away from the Tristana and kite from afar. So in the bottom lane. Ezreal seems to be is is probably going to be really dominant uh, if he does pressure the lane well and deal dish out proper poke towards the Tristana and Alistar. While at the mid lane there, 
we have a Heimerdinger against an Ari. Now, the amount of Heimerdinger in the game isn't really that much, so I can't comment for sure on who will win uh, this matchup. But it's, it's definitely an odd pick. Definitely. Yeah. So if Ari, if Ari has enough experience about Heimerdinger and knows what to do, okay, I think Ari has a higher chance since she has a certain uh, uh, to an extent of CC and she can easily dodge out all the 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 skills that Heimerdinger is going to throw the missiles the the grenades Ari uh, has her ultimate which she can dash just three times can easily dodge out these skills really easily and now we go to the top lane Orn has pra I, I don't think Orn has any uh, any huge ways to win against the Aatrox so with all that said it goes down as how well the Olaf paths so Olaf We'll have to path correctly, understand where the trundle is, and either go in and fight with the trundle with, before trundle hits six, or just start mm -hmm. looking at the lanes to do proper gankings. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, let's put it this way: the Orn was chosen first. The Aatrox was an exact counter to it. You know, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> All right, Ron, you, you, heard, you heard what we said. What about you? It's your turn. What do you think about the, uh, the current matchup? Honestly, uh, to be fair, looking at all these uh, champions they locked in, it really looks like another game of solo queue because uh, it, I don't really see much of it like complementing each other. I don't really see a, a actual... No, sorry. Uh, a, a probable team count that they can do. But all I could see now is maybe they, both of them are planning to do some catch, some catching in the... In the jungle for small skirmishes and fights. Uh, a so kill it's possible heavy that it could be a standard uh, uh, game for both teams. You know, very standard, mm -hmm. very long, and dependent on whoever makes their first mistake. I hope not. It's going to be really boring, but... <laughs> I apologize if I fall asleep. Some... <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, since it's going to be skirmishes, we're going to see more fights. And hopefully, they could do some you know flashy plays to like, wow us, you know, and the viewers as well. Well, if, yeah. you if you take a look, I mean, the Heimerdinger's name is literally Heimerdinger. So, like, I mean, he's a one-trick, most mm -hmm. likely. And um, give when, when you know your opponent is a one-trick and you still give it to him, th th this could mean trouble. Oh, my yeah. God. He's actually named himself Heimerdinger. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at that. I was like, wow. They named the character Heimerdinger Hold on. Haram. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have looked at this wrong. So Heimerdinger will be at the bottom lane along with the Alistar, while Tristana will be heading down mid. Now this changes the composition very quickly as Tristana has been really proficient in the mid lane. She can jump in. Again, I mentioned if a Tristana knows how to play, she can jump in and move out. But in the case where it's against the Ari, Ari doesn't have a lot of escape opportunity before she hits 6. If Tristana, uh, as soon as Tristana hits her le his level 3, he can jump in on the Ari and might and will have a high potential to just burst down the Ari. Um, how, how do I know that the Tristana is going mid? Easy. The, he's locking in on clans. That's what you're locking when you know your company, uh, your, your opponent has a strong CC ready oh, for you. Right, they're friends. I forgot. You brothers. Oh. That could be it. They're just countering each other. Oh, this is next level rivalry right here. Oh my it's god. Battle. They're just like, I know how you play. I know what you would choose. Nah, I'm Big Cow. You know what I mean? That's why it's it's yeah. built. Oh. I see they're, they're not playing for the team. They're here to screw each other over. Ooh. Pretty oh. much. Pretty oh. <laughs> <laughs> really We're really just getting pause. into it. What is up here, huh? Uh, can we wait? The chat is saying R question mark. Sorry, R. Oh, okay. Damn, toilet breaks in between <laughs> games are you know a bit dangerous for the team. Are we looking for an early five man invade coming from both teams? I wouldn't Probably. think so because both teams doesn't have really strong. Um, okay, maybe okay. Not on the team for the blue side, but the red team has a certain amount of um, crowd control. But um, not nothing much is gonna happen as um, mid lane just waste their hand and say hi to each other. Look at the vertical line from the mini map. Yeah. Oh, except for the Olaf there, but you know Ooh. it's really nice to see the the line. Everyone's in position. Why is Olaf home? Mm -hmm. 
he probably just went to the toilet. It's 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 almost like a wall. <laughs> <laughs> so you are incorrect there as Olaf pulled a standard strategy that a junglers knew a junglers and supports do nowadays is that uh, at the start of the game they run out as soon as possible and try to put up a single word somewhere on the map usually it will be somewhere around here or around here so this gives vision to um to see where the opponent jungle will start from um Olaf right now he just puts it in the middle river which he will see uh, the Ezreal as of now, uh, but he went home instantly and swapped it over to the Oracle Lens, which will go, uh, which will go into cooldown and finish cooldown almost immediately. Look at them nine teals. <laughs> Yo, yeah, fairly uh, safe uh, leash coming from both sides there, yeah. and said so they're gonna have a, a little bit of a peaceful fight at bot lane. Look at that, just volley after volley. Now Tristana oh, by man. right should have the better um, ability, uh, should have the proper, sorry, the better setups oh. to be able to push down the mid lane a little bit more. So we will look at how things go. Heimer took the buff! Oh my god, good call out by how to beat a Zester on my stream as Heimerdinger yes. accidentally takes the red buff away from Ray. Oh, uh, that's gonna that's gonna be a really bad start for <laughs> Olaf. But I guess he's doing okay, very okay. He's trying to rush down the um the jungle farms. Hopefully, he'll be able to make a comeback from um losing that initial uh red buff. So default, you play? Have you played against the Hyper bot before? Um, not that I can remember. Uh, hold up, as uh, Bobo goes into Crick, sir Kyrie oh. takes a huge chunk of health from Kyrie, and we'll just back off for now. Um, all right. So, um, Run, regarding to your questions, playing against Heimerdinger, I, I wouldn't say that it's normal, but I don't. Re I, I never really had any issues playing against a Heimerdinger. So mainly against a Heimerdinger, you just need to be able to. Ooh, hold on. As Kyrie gets flashed upon, cleanses the ignite, and we'll be able to. Uh, sorry, and Ray. Meanwhile, we'll be able to take down Bobo. Flashes over the orb. We'll secure another kill, getting a double kill. Ooh, Fael going in really hard. Lands all three kills, and Ares came down with a teleport. Will not be able to help out much. You can definitely see that they understand each other. You know, th th there's. Uh... A, a pattern of movement that you can see by both of them that, that they know exactly where each other's gonna be like especially just now when you saw the re taking the first blood and then getting killed it's just sort of like ah oh, okay i see what you did okay now here you go I don't, I don't know how to explain it but i like when you're looking at things from my rts lens you can start well, you're to gonna see... have to hold up there for a little bit as hammerdinger gets hooked by neon faith bobo coming down to bot We'll be able to. Oh, Hammerdinger flashes out of that situation, but Exhaust being Exhaust will slow down Hammerdinger, and Hammerdinger will not survive for long. So now Kit is now being fought. Uh, sorry, is now being um, gathered by uh, four of the enemy lane. So Fael did a perfect teleport there, as he know Ares already teleported to mid, so Ares won't be able to come down to help. It's unfortunate for the bot lane. The, they we didn't really know that the Chandu will be. Add bot lane again, so a bit of a you know, misunderstanding there. And uh, to come back to what you said about them knowing each other, it's very it's very uh, you know where you can actually see that the, both the junglers were around the mid, around mid lane at the same time. You know, they were both ready to know, uh, both ready to fight against a two v two. Yeah, essentially, it's, it's it's if you watch the movement yeah. of the mini map, you know, it's very it's very uh, fluid movements to one point to another, you know, like, it's like people saying, hey, you know that guy, he's going to do that again. And everyone's like, okay, 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 shift, 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 shift. That, that's pretty much what I'm seeing on the mini map right now. Okay. You can see they're vertically jungling. Like, the both of them will be at the same side of the map just to, just to farm. Yeah, so if Yo, any yeah, happen, yeah. If any even fight happens. Like stuff like that, like comfort, you know, where you're just like, I know this guy is not going to be trying to kill me, so we both farm. You know, oh, then we come back. You know, also makes ganks way more entertaining to see two v two instead of you know one v two. True, true. That is true. 
Alright, I'm gonna have to correct you there in a little bit because a vertical jungling is an actual term where both junglers are taking farms from the opponent's side. For example, oh, yeah, yeah. A and B and A and B. So if if it go, if it jung if their jungle farms like this, it's it's standard jungling. But if it, if the trundle decides to go over to Olaf's blue side and Olaf goes over to the trundle's blue side, then that would be called a vertical jungle. I really did not know there was a term for that. Vertical jungling? <laughs> yes. You're basically like forcing the jungler to not come to a specific lane. Because if they come, they're just gonna... They just won't get any camps and stuff. Right, 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 right. Actually, which is a better vertical jungle? To go for the blue first and then the enemy... Oh, sorry. Enemy red and then go for your blue. Or go for your red and then the enemy blue. It's ne there's not really a way to say which one is better. It's all about how much risk you're willing to take and how much information you get from your, um, for how you do. So I, 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 I called out that the Olaf starts off with a ward and then into changing it to the Oracle in the start of the game. Um, what that would usually do is that you know, uh, if you put it, if you put the ward in Trondo's blue side here, you would notice yeah. him taking it if He's there, but if he's not, he will be at the red side. So with that information, you know that after you clear up your jungle, you have the option to either go into their jungle to clean everything up, or you go to the jungle and clean up a single buff and try to come back to your own lane or your own side of the jungle to clean everything up on your own side. As uh, Bobo come in down, ooh, oh there you go, the on taking a goes down. Huge damage coming in from Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger hits 6, drops the, the big turret and will be able to take down 2 kills. Or maybe 1 kill and 1 for a Ray. I hate that one can do max, uh, max health damage. He sucks. Yeah. Imagine chunking someone before he's so tanky and he just like hits you back just with his Oh, look at that damage. And that's the power of the Heimerdinger. If you don't know how to manage around him, it's, it's gonna be a huge problem. Alright, Kyrie going in very strongly. Ari lands the charm, but will not be able to survive for long as Kyrie just cleanses the lovely kisses. He says, No! This ain't a relationship I wanna be in. This is too toxic. Stay back, who? Stay back. Okay, maybe not that word, but <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, Ooh. Is, this, is this coming from a personal experience here? You know, did you just experience some relationship trauma? As Rurel, meanwhile, sending the ultimate into the, the into the unknown. <laughs> oh, Bobo coming in really strong, trying to take down Kyrie, but is met with Ray. A Ray will be taken down as Fire helps out to secure the kill. We got a comment by Chin Jin in my live chat that says, This is awesome. Wow. Hardcore. Thank you for dropping by. Awesome indeed. Oh no, I think because uh, a lot of people were not used to us uh, doing League of Legends. So when we started doing League of Legends, they're like, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's great. You know. Oh, I, I, I mean to ask, them. I mean, what would the um, the general audience of uh, Black Box would be watching in most cases? Um, usually we do a lot of other games, mostly, okay, in the beginning we focus on mobile games due to access. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, not everybody could have a PC, which mm -hmm. is sort of why in the beginning when John was like, do League of Legends, we're like, yeah, but you know, we want to have games where everybody can play. And we were very much on accessibility. So mm -hmm. hence why this one, because of the lockdown, we're just like, okay, it's an online tournament. It's the lockdown. We might as well just try. It's now or never. <laughs> yeah, now or never. So, so, you know, this is a, a, a triumph for, uh, for John. You know, <laughs> he's, he's working hard. He's probably stressed right now, but he asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say it. it's coming in as a very good reward. Hold up that thought as Kyrie tries to jump away. Trando landing a very good pillar stops him from leaving too soon. Ares uses his ultimate. Oh, oh calls in oh, the horn of the horn. God. Will be able to knock out Trando there in a split second. Bobo goes down. Wow, that was definitely a 4v1 with uh, Suna Kid Sobs on the way. Although being late, <laughs> the Trando did fall. <laughs> Ooh, Heimerdinger dropped his big turret to try to push down this turret faster. Neon Faith landing his hook, 
will take down Suna Kit as he is overstepped. Ooh, quite a oh, long pit. Oh, Heimerdinger tanked the turret one too many shots and goes down to the turret. That was actually quite hilarious. <laughs> you could see him trying to escape and he would have made it. <laughs> the turret wasn't like so zoned in on him. Report the turret. We yeah. <laughs> Report the turret. <laughs> right. I and... gotta be honest. I thought he was actually gonna make it, and I I totally did not see the uh, the red line just zoning in on until the shot was made. I was like, oh no! I didn't but even that... realize him getting hit. <laughs> <laughs> now red team drops a riff Harrow and we'll be able to take down uh, the mid turret. First turret goes goes over to the red side. Yeah, and the, and funny thing is, the blue side was actually trying to get the first turret. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that was the plan. Yeah. They were going in really hard at it, but Suna Kit overstayed for a little too bit, uh, a little too long. Neon Faith managing to land a hook in that small gap right there, and um, Ailima was able to secure that um, that charm and then to just clear him up really rather easily. Yeah, and you know what? You guys ever played Uno? Uh, sorry, have you guys ever played Uno? Uh, yeah. The, the card game? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, like of course. A... It's like a reverse cut coming from uh, the enemy <laughs> team, yeah. From, from uh, the red team. <laughs> so no you. Oh, I yeah, the reverse right the, card. The game is gonna go a bit uh, farmy and uh, you know, a bit stagnant because everyone's gonna farm and get. Okay, some as of now, as as soon as you said that, Bobo tells you no. Mm -hmm. This is not gonna slow down. <laughs> You, they, they want to take my turret. We are not going to Soda. And Kairi says, I agree. We are not going to Soda. As he jumps in on Ailima, landing a tree shot on the bomb. Will not be able to survive for long as fire teleports, Ooh. pops the out, and pops the Tristana. Ooh, Bobo coming in at the bot lane again. Tries to stop Sunakit, but Sunakit just pushes him away. Sunakit being caught up by the team right now. He's tanking quite a bit of damage. Oh my god. As a healthy cow, he is a healthy bull. I don't know what I'm saying there, but he he comes out alive. <laughs> that, that was, I, I gotta give it up for the A tracks. He literally came from the top all the way down to the bottom and positioned himself quite nicely. Timing was pretty perfect uh, in that moment. Although no kills were taken, but I I I saw him on the mini map coming down. I was like, ah, what are you doing? And uh, the red team decides to look for the dragon and second dragon of the. Uh, of the game will be handed over to the red team. So, uh, we guys like, consider this game to be relatively close. It is. It's pretty clutch, actually. You know, it's. It, oh, Kyrie being say... caught again by Fael. He jumps out of the zone. We'll be able to stay alive there. I mean, we'll be able to deny anything from Fael. Oh, it looks like the Ari and Ooh, the Kyrie oh, doesn't oh, the have the clans. Oh, oh, I knew. Oh, no. I knew. oh okay. Heimerdinger being caught by Bobo again. Sunakit will be going down very quickly, and there you go. Oh, Neon Faith <laughs> kill securing right there for the team. Oh, that Tristana going up. Uh... It was Through a rough jungle. fight. I could... Yeah, it was pretty rough. It was pretty rough. I don't think. Um... I don't think whoever was playing the Tristana, I can't remember the name, was expecting the R to be coming down. Mm -hmm. It was it was it was a little bit too bad as we already know that Kyrie is a very consistent player. He knows that he is ready to cleanse away the charm. But in that case scenario, the cleanse was on cooldown and he was he just wasn't able to get away from it. Oh, it looks like the Ari's taking the top tower right there. Hopefully fast enough because the, enemy, the, the blue side is going to collapse on her. Yeah, and moving she's not to gonna collapse, she but run. she starts moving away from the fight. Although Orn is closing in, but um, it will be out of range uh, before... Well, it could be a 3v1 if Ari's not careful. Look at that. There's literally three people, four people right there at four, the top. Yeah. They're leaving the mid lane open. They're not really capitalizing on that push. And you can see that the trundle is. Ooh, uh, I'm gonna have to stop you all right arm. there. Ray being alone is caught by Fiel. Will not be able to survive for long mm. as three members of the red team strips him apart from the turret. 
That's probably the retaliation coming from the top side. Maybe they saw the three of them coming to the top and they're like, hey, why not we just gank up on this? Uh... I think that was definitely it, you know, because the RA definitely had vision of all four of them at the top lane. While we were focused there, just like the blue team, the red team was like, let's go below. <laughs> Mine block up. Play bad. Certainly a lot of hopes and dreams being taken apart right now for the blue team. The game is not over yet as uh, they're trying to help out Kyrie. Oh, maybe not. It was uh, they were helping out Heimerdinger there. Um, okay, so one thing I have to call out. Um, Heimerdinger, although he is strong in the laning phase, he does fall off a little bit in teamfight situation. If in, in, which in a lot of cases, most Heimerdingers don't know how to position and attack as... He can set up three turrets, but in a fight where everything's happening, it's really hard to really set up all those turrets in the right positioning. But ooh, if the setup was good, we might we might be able to see a turnaround. That's actually very possible. I mean, both teams are very good in team fighting. You know, very they know how to organize themselves well. You know, I don't see any any. Uh, uh, faltering or any miscommunication going on so far. It's just uh, very good tactics. Like, you know, just now when we see the red team just going down on the bottom, even with some comments uh, in the live chat for me, we're saying that the red team is very good at communicating by Pabunda Sialir. Oh. <laughs> what a name, Pabunda <laughs> Sialir. I'm surprised Facebook allowed you to have that name. Wait, is that, is that is the name what I think it is? Yeah, it is. It's basically a statement. Apa <laughs> benda yeah. <laughs> But it's like somebody actually put it as a name. As in first name, Pabunda. Last name, Sial Year. Well played there. Yeah. Oh, well um, played. an awesome name to actually have. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah. I was hoping to see Fire there. He, 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 was, he was rotating top. Um, but if the Tristana wasn't careful, she could have easily been picked off. But um, blue side, recognizing that they are in a deficit right now, decides to just back off and play this game a little bit safer. And uh, on my chat there, you can see another one of those Coven invites that has been He's plaguing so the server lately. Here's but, a yeah. public service announcement. Stop <laughs> sending the link. Please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Red Drake is here. So Looks so like the red team is... Uh, no, yeah, go ahead, so go ahead. They're trying, they're trying to establish vision for Dragon right now. I don't think they're, they're really going to start it now. They just want to you know, see if they could... Ooh, Kyrie whoa, flashes away from the, the final uh, Q. We'll survive that, or the, uh, that, that skirmish for, for now. Yeah, that was intense. That was intense. But back to what I said, they are just trying to, you know, tease the enemy team by putting down wards and trying to deny vision for them to get dragon. Ah, I'm guessing yeah. they're gonna get dragon now since they don't see anyone like, nearby. Ooh, Fael teleporting really early to get to come help out the team as they secure the dragon. Ooh, Suna can almost gets hooked. Ailima over is in a bad position there. Oh, flashes away from the fight. Olaf and Dra uh, and and the old Alistar going in at front. Will tank a huge chunk of damage and takes down Neon Faith. Ray, ooh, flashes away from Fael. Will be able to survive for now. Now, this is a 4 versus 4 situation. Will they be able to turn it around? Fael gets knocked up, but he drops his blade down. Will be able to fight this out. Iris gets knocked back. Ooh, I Kyrie going in very deeply. Oh, hold on. Hold that thought as Heimerdinger trades his life for the Ezreal. Now we are in the unique position where Kyrie is in full health and the opponent team are trying to find him. I mean trying to disengage here. Oh Kyrie jumping in on Bobo. Bobo. Oh good pillar by Bobo to deny any more advances from Kyrie. I mean I could definitely see what the blue team was trying to go for uh in that team fight just now, but I I I don't really see the payoff. I mean they they were trying to even out the playing field, but it also helped the red team take an additional, I think, what, three kills? Now they're at 15? Four. 
four, sorry, four kills. Yeah, I mean, and it only bumped up uh, the blue team from six to eight. You know, so for for two kills, you lost four. You know, that's. I mean, they started the fight off really well, but oh, just... they started off well. Yeah, but I can with see what they were trying to do. <laughs> yeah, but with um, the amount of healing Aatrox does, they actually got him to a point where he's actually just like five percent uh, in health. But with the I um, it, he pick as now he picks off a uh, a death stance over here. Um, every single skill he throws up, he gets a dis uh, he gets a decent amount of healing, and in addition to his own passive. He is right now a very strong character, which will be able to heal out. So if you want to take him down, you guys gotta. You, you, they have um, blue team there. They need to pick up an executioner's calling to stop the uh, stop the healing. That's true. Actually, I'm just agreeing, but like only yeah. when you pointed it, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just giving you the credit, Nephos, man. Dude, sometimes you come up with stuff, I'm just like, I did not see that at all. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, um, as of now, I would say Red Team's playstyle are... They, they, know their, they know their styles, they know what they're going to do. As you see there, the Trundle picking up the Rambo Vest, uh, he's going to be the tank Ooh. of the lane. But I want to specifically Ooh. call out what the Ezreal is picking up. So in, in the previous game, we see that the Ezreal picks up a trinity or at least sets himself up for a trinity force but in this game he, he is picking up the iceborne gauntlet although it is again another very common build on ezreal but in this fight where the tristana can easily jump onto the ezreal an iceborne gauntlet will be able to help him peel even if he's on his own oh and he finishes his muramana oh. that brings him to a very well, threatful, I would say. He's gonna be a huge threat for a blue team now. You know, seeing them build up all this like damage and uh, all, all the skills I see from each side of the team, I'm really excited to see their full on fight, man. Uh, that is true, that is fight, true. Because you know? so far, all we've been seeing was skirmishes and like, little pockets of fights that turn out to be like. Wait, we, we saw a 5v5 fight at Dragon. Yeah, but uh, technically the Tristana wasn't really there. He was. Ah, uh, yeah, she was there a little late. I agree. It's a matter of execution. As now Aatrox mm -hmm. is heading down bot side, so they know that this is not going to be too fun if they start the fight as of now. Um, Aatrox not having the teleport won't means that he won't be able to join the fight if any kind of fight happens. Uh, Red team just playing it cautiously and tries to word things uh word it up for. Uh, for their side. I don't know about you, but I'm really feeling the tense vibe coming from both of these teams here. Oh, oh, oh yeah, you can definitely feel it. Like, they're just dancing around each other to, to try and see who goes where to try to catch up with anyone's mistake. Aatrox forces the Orn to come back down to bar. He's selling the Orn to come or else you're gonna lose a turret. Without a choice, he backs off and goes there. We, we won't be seeing too much of a fight right now. Ooh, maybe oh, not. As soon as kid God. gets charmed. Oh, but so Nautilus misses the hook. We'll be able to get away though. That was darn Ooh. close <laughs> for the Alistar. As oh, I just realized that Ezra, the guy's yeah. name, it's Azrael. So he's basically spelling the word Azrael, but in a different way. The other, other <laughs> Azrael. The other, other Azrael. So we have a one trick in the team. Dude, in the, we have two team. one tricks in the game. Yo. Dude, I usually, I thought... The name Ezreal was like a, a brother of, you know, Ariel from the Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you're not, you're not entirely not wrong. wrong. I mean, I mean could they, be. they're all modeled after uh, angelic type names, so yeah. It could be. Yeah. Until, Kindred, anyways, uh, yeah. until somebody proves us wrong, uh, well, <laughs> we won't somebody know. I think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right now, Bobo is uh, currently just pushing down the mid lane. Um, 
I don't know, looking at the, um, the items that both team has right now, I think red team is a lot more stronger, especially since Bobo has already picked up the Gargoyle Stone Plate. Means that he will be able to tank up a lot more damage coming in from the blue team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it just seems that most of the damage focus is on the uh, uh, Tristana right there. On the blue team side, I mean. So, <laughs> just to specify. Yeah. <laughs> An interesting pickup by the Tristana where she picks up the Hexdrinker. I would assume it was for the earning laning phase. But, uh, mm. it, it, but uh, um, the red team, they only have a singular AP caster. So I wouldn't call it necessary to rush it down uh, right now because there are a lot more other items that, that should really take priority. Mm. Him finishing the uh, the Blade of the Ruin King and follow up with... Oh, uh, here we go, the, uh, the Rapid Fire Cannon. Rapid Fire Cannon. There fire we go. Cannon, sir. So yeah, um, it's a lot more attack speed based kind of build. And I really, I just can't see, I just can't find the aggressiveness in the build, like he's playing really safely, he's trying to like keep keep the distance while trying, while telling us that he wants to fight, so this is a really confusing build from the Tristana. I think it's just a pure reaction to Ari. I mean, if you look at like Ari's build, there's barely anything to prevent any of that damage like outright. So it's, uh, you know, if we pair both hero, to, uh, sorry, champion to champion, your apologies to that one. Champion to champion, you can see that it is definitely a counter to a specific situation. But now that it's in the mid to late game where they're team fighting, it doesn't make sense. But uh, I don't know. It could work in certain situations, especially if the Ari is out of place. We'll definitely hope for the best for the blue team. But red team right now, oh looking dominant on the fight, lands a good hook on the Tristan. Tristan will jump over the wall. Meanwhile, Olaf gets charmed by the Ari and bursted down very quickly by Ailima. Now in the case where Bobo is alone, ooh, did not even ooh. get the chance to pop the gargoyle. Kyrie still alive somehow. We'll get away from the fight as soon as Kit will drop really soon. With the amount of health that he has not gotten anymore. Oh, Heimerdinger pressing the stat stasis. Will not survive for long. Oh, Heimerdinger, how could you? <laughs> <laughs> League of Hourglass, ladies and gentlemen. Red team yeah, now looks was... towards the Baron. I was just about to say, that was definitely a, uh, a painful situation for the blue team right there. I mean... I think any hope of coming back is uh, very slim now. I mean, the, de the deficit between the two is too wide. I mean, hopefully they could at least like try and stop the game a little bit more because Orn has his items to give out. So maybe once he passes it to uh, the Tristana and the Heimerdinger, I think it's going to really, really turn the tide for the blue team here. Things certainly looking grim. Red side will be coming in really strong with a Baron buff and three Dragon buffs on mm. their side. The, now, the final dragon is coming up very soon. This Fire Soul Dragon. Ooh, oh, hold up. Kyrie <laughs> plays around again where he gets um, stopped by Fire for a little bit and then gets away from there. Now, the final. The, 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 sorry, the, the third Infernal Dragon coming up. They would like they they need to stop this. They need to stop Red Team from taking it away. Uh, as they will get the um, the Fire Dragon Soul. And with the the way that Red Team fights, each attack or at least each poke, each Q that Ezreal sends, there's a chance for popping the Fire Soul. And if that really does land on over to their side. Ooh, blue team is gonna take a huge punch even before any single fight ever happens. Alright, blue team has made the call to go on and Alina coming in from the side. Ooh, Ares sending the ultimate the wrong way. Ray drops as well as Kari and then the Heimerdinger. And then Ares and then Sunakit. And red oh, team man. picks off and brings home the ace. 
With the Baron yeah, Bob, they will definitely push the mid lane down. Will definitely take away yeah. the inhibitor as well. Now, 30, uh, 20 seconds on the timer. Will the blue team be able to come out in time to defend their turret? I don't think so. I think it's gonna... With the Baron buff in, and a minion, they could... I mean, sorry. If, with a Baron buff and a minion wave, I don't think they could even hold out for, you know, 40 seconds. Definitely so. on call as red team just rushes it down while Trundle, on the other hand, decides that, hey, I want that money. I I'm gonna get that dragon. Oh, look at that. We got the dragon. Now let's end the game. And red team brings home the game. Do you think like the Chandra was like, wait guys, don't end it first, I want to finish this dragon. Hold he was on. probably like, you guys do whatever you want, I'll do whatever I want. You know, it, it's, it's, it's that situation. I've, I've been there before, but I think we were right to assume that the, the red team was going to be winning this one. I mean, they definitely had the more terrifying build. Uh, and it, it's, we can see, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> Heimerdinger, why did you? What? Okay. So yeah, um, the consistent damage that uh, Heimerdinger can dish out during a team fight is really strong. But in in the in this case scenario, um, red team just had a lot more stronger front line. Um, they they're rushing in really deep and really quickly onto the Heimerdinger without enough peels for the Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger wasn't able to survive for long. But regardless, even if he leaves the fight, his turret stays and his turret will keep shooting out those hits. In the laning mm -hmm. phase, he was able to send out enough, um, a lot of missiles actually, onto the bottom side, which is why you can see if, if I turn on over here on the damage taken side here, you can see that the Heimerdinger actually. Oh wait, hold on. Oh, I got it wrong. I thought that um, the Heimerdinger would be dealing a lot of damage onto um, the Nautilus here, but it turns out I was completely wrong. Where? Wait, he's oh. mostly gafting at, sorry, going after the Trundle. It might be so, as Trundle is always the first one running it in. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, that's true. But that is generally how it goes, I guess. Um, with the with with the correct lineup, Hammerdinger can be a powerful opponent. But um, it props to the Trundle for being able to just dissect the mid lane, dissect the Tristana, preventing Tristana from being able to come uh, make make a huge um, front for the team. Hmm. It's either that or if we um we don't have to go back to the graph as, as well, but I did notice that like although Heimerdinger was the one that did the most damage, if you look on the red team side, I'm sorry, if you look at the blue team side, only Heimerdinger did majority of the damage. The rest of the team were just like, okay, okay. But on the red team side, you had three. You had the Aatrox, uh, you had the uh Ari and as Ari, well. as real, yeah. So, so, so they had three. Although it wasn't the top damage dealers, it comes pretty close. If we evaluated overall, we had the he Heimerdinger uh, and the Ari, uh, Azrael and Aatrox in in chronological hierarchy order type of stuff. And most of them happens to be on the red team side. So they may not be doing the most damage, but they had the most damage dealers overall as a team. Right, you are. So, Run, uh, could you try to get the um, the winning team into the interview room so we can maybe hold yeah, on? Yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> get, you get a hold of them right now. There you go. But... So, we will. Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to talk a little bit more about what could have been done and what has been done in this situation as in terms of uh, itemization here. So, um, so the Aatrox came in with the Death Dance and even at that point, he was really strong already. But by finalizing his Guardian Angel, it, it makes him an even stronger target. Uh, a stronger, sorry, not a stronger target, a stronger front line. Whereas if in any case, if he does fall, he will be able to make a comeback uh, later uh, in the game. While at the same time, Red team picks up two of the Gargoyle stone plate. These prompts that the front line is going to be impossible to tear through. Even uh, even if Heimerdinger was able to take a, a huge amount of pokes on these two characters, they won't be able to take he won't be able to take these two person down. One last thing I want to point out is that I don't I didn't really I don't really understand why um Ezra picked up an executioner's calling. But as this is an item that should have been picked up by Kyrie here, uh, he could have easily picked it up and he would have been able to 
fight around with the uh, with Fael as well as Bobo. Uh, at least it will mit it will mitigate the amount of life steal that uh, or or a life steal will be take um life steal from Fael. It will be able to skirmish around even in the mid game because I, I there was a lot of potential where Fael actually caught Kyrie. But Kyrie was able to dish out enough damage to stop Fire from killing him. At the same time, Kyrie of course backs away from those fights. But if the executioner's calling was present, I think it could have gone differently. Uh, yeah, but actually, very much so. Yeah. Actually, I think the reason why Ezreal took the executioner calling was because of uh of the you know uh, uh, sorry of the Alista giving the heals to the Heimerdinger and himself. So mm. I think maybe that was part of the reason why. But I'm not really too sure. It could have been. I mean, we we definitely see that this game was just pure reaction to each other, which is, which is a very good thing. I mean, uh, you know, one of the the the, the dangers of um, mastering a game is that you're set in your ways, you're set in your strategies, you're very mm -hmm. rigid, you know, and it takes a different kind of mentality to be able to react precisely to your opponent, you know, because that's very risky, you know, because you invest a lot. In building items uh in the beginning you know you follow sort of mm -hmm. a tech path so to speak so to do sort of like an item switch or, or something is very hard and it takes sort of a little bit of uh foresight and thinking yeah and uh yeah i think also 